Chargers need a new general manager. After firing Brandon Staley and Tom Telesco, the Chargers are probably going to want to hire a new general manager and then look for a new head coach. So I've got three of some of the best options that are out there right here. And while I pull up this list, make sure to like and subscribe. If you do enjoy this content, man, it helps me out so much. And now let me tell you about Adam Peters, the 49ers assistant general manager. So Adam Peters was a defensive end at UCLA for two years and then gave it up to start working in the football operations department at UCLA. He began to work for Bill Belichick while still in his early 20s, where he worked as a scouting assistant and then an area scout for the New England Patriots. During his time with the Patriots, they drafted Clint Oldenburg, who is the offensive lineman who actually now works for the ratings department in Madden. So you could say that that's a red flag right there because Keenan Allen and Justin Herbert are not as high rated as they should be. But you know what? We can let that go. That's more on Clint than on Adam Peters. He just drafted the guy. In 2009, he became a regional scout for the Broncos and quickly worked his way up to a national scout and then the director of college scouting in 2015 the broncos were able to win the super bowl with a team that adam peters helped find and grow through the draft with 27 players on that roster out of the 53 were drafted by the broncos that is more than half with guys like demarius thomas Derek wolf von miller shaq barrett chris harris jr and matt paradis being part of that broncos team that he helped draft under John Elway. And then in 2017, he became the vice president of player personnel under John Lynch in San Francisco. And then 2021, he became the assistant general manager. He got GM interviews from the Panthers in 2021 and the Giants this past off season. And he's definitely going to be interviewed by Dean Spanos. With the 49ers, they drafted well in early and late rounds with guys like Nick Bosa, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and, and uh, Aaron Banks all looking really good in the first two rounds. And then Fred Warner, George Kittle, DJ Jones, Dre Greenlaw, Talanoa Hufunga, Elijah Mitchell, and Brock Purdy, who now might even be the MVP this year. I don't know. I'm not saying it, but on day three, those are all the guys, except uh, Fred Warner, who was actually in the third round, but everyone else that I just listed was a day three pick. Both John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan speak very highly of this guy, and Adam Peters is highly responsible for some of these draft successes in the later rounds. I mean, just listen to him talk about how George Kittle was drafted. I remember scouting George Kittle at, at Iowa when I was with the Broncos at the time, and he was a really unique athlete, but wasn't a really high, highly thought of prospect by, by most people, but we had targeted him, and we had really a third round grade on George, but we, we gambled and we knew that we could get him in the fifth round, and I don't think we'd do it again. I don't think we'd gamble on that again, obviously, but we were able to get George in the fifth round. Really, it was cool because we kind of called our shot a few weeks earlier and made it happen on draft day. Now, the argument against him, I guess, would be that the Broncos won the Super Bowl because of Peyton Manning rather than their really good defense, which I don't agree with at all, by the way. I think it's actually the opposite. And then with the 49ers, they haven't drafted as well recently, especially with that Trey Lance pick. They even traded up to number three to get him and that really kind of mortgaged their future did not work out at all now i understand that the trey lance situation was just terrible for everyone involved both the quarterback and the organization so i don't blame him entirely plus the chargers don't have to worry about drafting quarterback because we have freaking phil uh i was gonna say philip rivers oh my god we have justin herbert bro he has had success in the draft on both the broncos and especially the 49ers in both early picks and late picks so that means that he can draft the superstars but he also can provide good depth to a team i love adam peters man and if we don't hire him as general manager i think some other team certainly will in the offseason as of right now i think he's my number one guy now let's talk about ian cunningham the bears assistant general manager ian was an offensive lineman for virginia and earned all american honors as a freshman but when he entered the NFL with the Chiefs as an undrafted free agent in 2008, he wasn't able to stick around, so he quickly moved on to scouting jobs. He was a player personnel assistant, an area scout with the Ravens from 2009 all the way to 2016. And during his time with the Ravens, he was a part in drafting guys like Jimmy Smith, Pernell McPhee, Cal Juszczyk, 
Ryan Jensen, Ronnie Stanley, and Matthew Judon. He moved on to the Eagles as the director of college scouting in 2017 and was promoted all the way to director of player personnel in 2021. With the Eagles, he had way more sway in draft choices and the picks look better here compared to his time with the Ravens. With guys like Rasul Douglas in the third round, Jordan Mailata in the seventh round. Can you guys imagine drafting a starting tackle that looks as good as Jordan Mailata in the seventh, man? We drafted Troy Pickens in the third. Anyways, Andre Dillard in the first round, Jalen Hurts in the second round franchise quarterback, Landon Dickerson in the second round franchise center. That shows success from the very top all the way to the very bottom of the NFL draft, specifically in the trenches. I mean, this guy was a former offensive lineman and he has two Super Bowl rings, man. One with the Ravens in 2012 and then one with the Eagles in 2017. And his teams have made the playoffs 10 times out of the 14 seasons that he has been in the front office. He became the Bears assistant general manager in 2022. And it's too early to tell how these past two draft classes are going to play out for them. But Ryan Poles, the Bears general manager, basically liked him so much that he created that job specifically for him. Now, he does have some misses like Jalen Rager in the first round. That's not good. J.J. Sega whiteside in the second round. Sidney Jones in the second round. I mean, Ian Cunningham has been in demand these past two years. And last year, he was offered the Cardinals general manager job, but he decided to decline. It. He would not be my first choice, but I do like him a lot. I think he should be a general manager for some team in this cycle. I also like the fact that he seems to value trench players more than most of the other guys that we're going to look at. And I think there's a lot of value to having a guy like that in the front office. I mean, especially because he is a former offensive lineman himself. He he knows what he's looking at and he knows who to draft. Now, next we have Alec Hallaby, the Eagles assistant general manager. Alec was a high school quarterback in Madison, Wisconsin, and went on to study English and economics at Harvard. This guy's a genius. He sent his resume to every team in the NFL and the only team that responded to him Howie Roseman of the Philadelphia Eagles. They decided to give him a shot with an internship in the football operations department in 2007. He worked his way up with the team, taking on multiple different responsibilities. As he said, the bulk of my time is spent on personnel with our pro guys and our college guys, but I spend a lot of time with analytics, obviously. I have a history there. I spend a lot of time with our cap guys. I spend a lot of time with our sports performance, a lot of time with our coaches. This guy just does everything. His, he worked his way all the way up to assistant GM in 2022, and he has done it all with the Eagles. But his main thing seems to be the analytics. He is so analytically driven that it has actually reportedly caused issues in the Eagles organization with head coach Doug Peterson. And he actually responded to this. He said, I felt like I had a productive relationship with Doug. I liked working with Doug. I think he was a great coach. So I looked at that as a positive period. We won a lot of games. For me, the narrative outside wasn't necessarily how I experienced it inside, but I would say that I learned a lot from Doug. So that's good. He's not entirely focused on the analytics and the relationship between him and the head coach was just blown out of proportion. Maybe they had one argument or something, but when are you not going to have an argument? They both want the team to win. And he is obviously willing to listen to a football guy like Doug Peterson. So that tells me that he's not just an analytics guy. That's just what he has been the best in throughout his time with the Eagles. And also he's starting to grind the tape more and find patterns through game film and the data to make his decisions. He seems to be a genius and was even featured in the Forbes 30 under 30 list in 2015 for being on the cutting edge of football analytics in the NFL. Alec Hallaby, 36 years old and he fits that mold man of a young and intelligent football mind that will evolve with the nfl or even be a part of forcing the nfl to evolve this is a guy that i expect to interview extremely well and although i don't know how much sway he has had with those eagles draft picks i think he's got some impressive data to back up the decisions that he makes because the eagles have been one of the better franchises ever since he began working with them and they seem to even gotten better over time as his role began to increase in that front office now the only thing 
is I think he would demand a lot of control. And Dean Spanos and John Spanos, bro, the Spani, are they willing to actually be hands off and give up the control to a guy like Alec Halaby, who seems to got all the answers because of the data and he's watching the game film? Are they gonna do it? I don't know. Now, I think you can't go wrong with any one of these three guys, but I'm gonna come out with a video tomorrow with three other guys that I really like from a couple of their different teams. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you do enjoy this content, and I will see you tomorrow.